This is Dr. Hayek. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the photoelectron spectroscopy. I will start this video by discussing the photoelectric effect. That refers to the phenomenon in which electrons are emitted from the surface of a metal when light strikes it. Now, the photoelectric effect is characterized by several observations. Number one, there is a specific threshold frequency to emit an electron from a metal surface. Number two, below the threshold frequency, no electrons are emitted regardless of the intensity of the light. Number three, if the light frequency is higher than the threshold frequency, electrons will be emitted and the number of electrons emitted will increase with the light intensity. And number four, the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons increases linearly with the frequency of the light used. Now, the threshold frequency represents the minimum energy required to remove the electron from the metal's surface. So this energy is going to be represented as E0. That is equal to H multiplied by the frequency nu0, where H is Planck's constant. Now, if the frequency of the light used is less than the threshold frequency, the electrons will not be removed. However, if the frequency of the light used is greater than the threshold frequency, so electrons will be removed. Now, the kinetic energy of the electron removed can be calculated by H nu minus H nu zero, or E minus E zero. So Ke electron is the kinetic energy of emitted electron. H nu is the energy of incident photon. And H nu zero is the energy required to remove an electron from metal surface. Now that I defined the photoelectric effect, let's talk now about the photoelectron spectroscopy. Now the technique in which irradiation with enough energy can remove an electron from an atom or a molecule is known as photoelectron spectroscopy. Now let's take a quick look on a photoelectron spectrometer where the atom or molecule's beam is irradiated with a light with enough energy to remove electrons. Now the removed electrons, they reach a detector where their kinetic energy is going to be calculated. Now knowing the kinetic energy of the removed electrons and the energy of the incident photon, we can calculate the binding energy of the electrons using the following expression, where E0, which is the binding energy of the electrons, is equal to H nu, which is the energy of the incident photon, minus the kinetic energy of each electron. Now here is a picture of a real photoelectron spectrometer. As you can see, it's not a, a simple device. Now using such a device, we can generate what we call the photoelectron spectrum. I'm going to show you now how we can generate the photoelectron spectrum of sodium. Now sodium has 11 electrons. Now if we use a light with enough energy to remove all the electrons, we will be generating the photoelectron spectrum. Now as you can see, according to the color code that I'm using in here, every time we remove an electron from a different energy level, we have a different peak. Now, if we look at the intensities of this peak, we can see that the peak at 0 0.50 corresponds to one electron and the peak at 3.67 corresponds to six. The two peaks at 6.87 and 104 correspond to two electrons. So now we can generate or we can associate this with the electron configuration of sodium, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 and 3s1. Now you might be thinking, why did I get two peaks for the energy level n equal 2? Now if you look at the energy diagram of the orbitals or the subshells, we can see that there is a difference between the energy of the 2s and the energy of the 2p, where the binding energy for electrons in the 2s orbital will be greater because it's closer to the nucleus. Now in here I'm going to show you a real photoelectron spectrum for palladium atom. Now as you can see it's not as simple and clear as the one I showed you before because 
it contains a lot of noise and this noise comes from different phenomena so I'm not going to discuss all this now but it's good to see how the photoelectron spectrum looks like. Now using this technique we can compare the photoelectron spectra of different atoms. In this example I chose carbon, oxygen and neon where their spectra are represented in here. So we can clearly see that when the nuclear charge increases from plus 6 to plus 8 to plus 10, the energy required to remove the core electrons will increase. So will increase from 28.6 to 52.6 to 84.0 respectively. Now we can also see that the intensity of the peripheral peaks or the peaks to the left will increase according to the number of electrons removed from the subshell. So now that I have discussed this, let's take a look on the photoelectron spectrum of scandium. Now we know the electron configuration of scandium ends with 4s2, 3d1. So we fill the 4s orbital before the 3d orbital. However, when we start removing electrons, we also remove the electron from 4s before the 3d. Now why would this happen? Now if we take a look on the radial probability of these two orbitals, we can see that the orbital d is less energetic than the orbital 4s. So why would we fill the 4s before the 3d then? Just because we say an electron in 4s orbital spends a short but significant amount of time closer to the nucleus than an electron in a 3d orbital. However, this electron will spend most of its time further from the nucleus. So when we come to remove this electron, there is a higher probability of finding it farther from the nucleus than closer to the nucleus. And that's why we remove this electron first. I hope this video was helpful to you. So please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.